We took these 16 action figures and made the biggest game of Kill Team you've ever seen. And when we say big, we mean big, like literally a giant scale. Stick around to find out how Giant Kill Team came to be. Totally support my space marine. Oh my god. We knew we wanted to play two very different factions and wanted to make terrain unlike anything we have for 40k. So after settling on the Necrons and the Blood Angels, we ordered no less than 16 action figures and got to work. First up, we had to free them from the shackles of their packaging, which was clearly a very glamorous and exciting job. If you haven't bought any of these figures yet, you may not know that they actually come with some pretty massive mold lines, so we rolled up our sleeves and began the painstaking process of cleaning and prepping the models for painting and converting, contributing our own battle damage where we felt they needed some variation between models. With the models prepped and ready to go, it was time to get painting. Kat was in charge of the overall paint design, and she would take charge of the Necrons in particular, while I was responsible for finishing the Blood Angels. Zack was our resident terrain builder and mass primer, so would handle the base coats of the Space Marines. For these guys, we used a combination of Mephiston Red Rattle Can over a darker maroon from the hardware store. Kat formed a plan for the Necrons to get that signature Neolock look, that involved first priming and painting them silver, and then dappling various blue and teal craft paints on, to simulate that ancient Egyptian feeling. The action figures of course came with a tiny stand, but we are Warhammer players and wanted to really feel like we were playing with scaled up miniatures in every way. It was for this reason that Zack was able to purchase his true love, the pink foam cutter. Using this magical device, Zack cut all 16 bases we needed for our models with the correct bevel on each edge. The next challenge, however, was securing the models to these bases in a firm but impermanent way. We did, after all, want to still be able to move and pose them as we saw fit. To solve this problem, I came up with a replicable rig for each of the stands that would bolt down a short rod to each base, providing the support our toys needed to stand. Of course, 16 beautiful action figures painted up is fantastic, but we had a long way to go if we were to play a full game of Giant Kill Team on a proper board. We all agreed that we had seen enough ruined Imperial cities for a lifetime, and instead decided on a Necron complex recently emerged from the sand. Our resident terrain maker, Zach, was up for the challenge and began working on designing an interwoven, fun, and manageable Necron city. We knew that we wanted lots of different layers to clamber up and down on, as well as have a heavy amount of barricades for use during different setups. Busting out the instant classic, the pink foam cutter, Zach got to work building prototype structures as Kat and I worked on barricades. We had a very important task for Bridger, who was to provide us with the raw materials to make our Necron energy barrels. 36 cans of Coke Zero later, we were slicing, gluing, and painting to our heart's content, and quickly found ourselves with more barrels than we knew what to do with. In the meantime, Zack pushed the limits of what was physically possible with ever-expanding Necron terrain. The height of a given board of pink foam created some limitations, but we were determined to go big. This was, after all, big kill team, and we set our sights high. It was important that we kept this massive project manageable since we wanted to have a sufficiently dense board to be able to play on, and so certain easily replicable design motifs began appearing across various structures, such as the energy beams and certain beveled angles. As structures began to be completed, we would prime and paint each of them, giving a glow to the energy rods, but overall keeping it as simple as possible. We did, after all, have to repeat whatever steps we took here across this massive battlefield. As far as weathering and basing goes, I know I wanted to go straight to the source. One trip to the hardware store later and we were rocking two massive bags of crumbly desert rocks and sand. These would be used not only to base the models, but also used across our 12 foot by 8 foot battlefield, blending with our two neoprene mats. We tackled each problem as it arose, and while by and large the project was going well, we did have some setbacks. First off, some of our bevels did make for some pretty unstable structures, but we really, really wanted to be able to place our models on them. Zach had recently become obsessed with the product called Museum Wax, which he discovered on a Ninjon video, and throughout the project there was no job that he thought was beyond the capabilities of Museum Wax. Turns out, while it was great for a number of parts of the build, holding up an ancient structure was not one of them. Our next big hurdle came as we prepared for our first shoot. It's shoot day for Giant Kill Team. Let's take a look at what we're doing. Looking lovely, beautiful. We've got our measuring tools, snack sections, donuts. We've got some uh, basement paver material here. Coming into here, we've got the actual table itself. This is a double board, of course, and uh, it's looking pretty awesome. We're still solving lots of things. There's certain things you just can't you know, figure out until the actual day of. I will totally take the blame here, as I wanted to create an atmospheric fog effect on the board during the game, and have it emanate from the center of the Necron structure. First, we had to figure out how to run wires to the center of the table. Then it was a matter of making room for the piping. Then it was providing enough ice to cool the fog, ensuring that it would float low on the game board. 
problem after problem. If you've seen our live games, well, you know that this feature did not make it into the final cut, but we did use it for some pre-recorded shots, so there's that. But hey, we're having fun, learning a lot, and experimenting all over the place. Wispy, wafty smoke. <laughs> This was the largest hobby project we had ever undertaken. Banding together to use everyone's individual skills and interests, we managed to pull it off and create a giant kill team board and models. The last step is, of course, to play games. Tune in to check out our giant kill team games, which are an absolute blast. We'd love to see your own giant kill team setups. It really is a great project to do with your friends. What else do y'all want to see us do? Can we take this concept even farther? That's going to be it for me. I'll catch y'all next time on the tabletop. Bye.